What's going on? Welcome back to another After Effects tutorial. My name is Con Ross. Today we're gonna to be doing a sick bubble transition. Oh, 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 yep, yep, yep. What'd you think? Pretty cool? Pretty cool? Alright, let's get into After Effects and learn some stuff. I'm not actually typing. Alrighty, now that we're in After Effects, I'm going to show you the final effect that we're going to be accomplishing today. Uh, you kind of already saw it with the silly intro, but um, you know, here's the final shot with the bubble that swoops in, uh, goes into the next shot of Amir and Hannah dancing. Along with my last tutorial as well, if this gets good enough response, I'll do a full tutorial. So if you look at this shot originally, it doesn't have, see how this looks like it's almost moving in 3D depth? Um, this is originally just a tripod pan if you look at the original clip. So there's no zoom here at all. And then one of the most difficult parts of this effect was to create uh, a false sense of 3D. And that's a really uh, complex thing to do. And uh, it's a lot more complex than I want to get into this to, with this tutorial. Uh, you know, it'd be like an hour long, like I kind of talked about in my last one, maybe even a couple hours long. But if enough people respond and want the tutorial, I'll definitely give it. I also just want to say that the download link to this project file is in the description, so go click on that if you want to open it and follow along. So now that all that is out of the way, I want to get right into this tutorial. So let's just start by uh, importing our bubble blowing clip into a new composition down right here. It'll bring it into a... Uh, you know, new composition with all the footage attributes. You can see here, Hannah blows a bubble, and then obviously there's no bubble on the screen. So the first shot in accomplishing this effect was to go over here to the effects and presets tab and type in the 3D camera tracker. And then drag this onto the footage and just let it do its thing. It takes a while to initialize and analyze and get it all tracked. So now that After Effects is done with that, something that I found with this specific 3D camera track is, since it's such a wide angle lens, After Effects has trouble tracking that and it thinks it's an actual 3D movement when in reality it's just a tripod pan. So just go over here to the advanced tab and where it says solve method, click auto detect and then change that to a tripod pan. And then it'll go back through and resolve your camera and you can just right click and create a Nolan camera. So something that you probably realize with tripod pans is there's no 3D depth movement. So it's a lot easier to create masks and things and track things to cameras when you're shooting tripod pans. If you're trying to do this on your own, that's just a little quick tip. Uh, tripod pans, typically if you're panning out, are a lot easier to work with than actual 3D camera movement. But now we got a nice solid 3D track here. You can see it on this null object. I'll just go ahead and scale this boy up so you can see that. And the next step in this tutorial is creating the bubble. And don't worry, I included the picture that I found. So I'm gonna drag this into its own composition. So now that this bubble is in its own composition, uh, if we drag this composition up here that it created over into our other composition, then all the effects that we make inside this composition will work in this composition. I know that's a pretty basic thing in After Effects, but if you're new to it, uh, I thought that explanation would be worthy. So now in this composition, let's say we get a little crazy and we just make it like ridiculously dark. Obviously that doesn't look like a bubble anymore, but it's gonna make that change over in our other composition. So now that we have our bubble right here, let's go over into our other composition uh, with the pre-comped bubble and make a couple changes. The first thing I'm gonna add to it is an effect called Unmolt. And this is a plugin made by Red Giant that is free. I'll link it in the description so you can download it. You can also use the screen blending mode, but I think Unmolt looks a little better in this situation. So this effect basically just takes your black and creates an alpha layer from it. So if you solo this layer, you can see it actually creates an alpha from the black. So if you set this to screen and take off Unmolt and you mute the layer, just using the screen blending mode doesn't actually create an alpha. So that's what is cool about Unmolt and it's free and I'll link it in the description like I said, is it creates an alpha layer from the blackness of your image. So that's pretty cool. And now we're gonna do a couple more things to blend this the best we can with the bubbles in the background. What I'm gonna do first is create a circular mask over these reflections, you know, just so that isn't really in the way too much, mess with the bezier curves. So now if you flip this on and off, you can see it just gets rid of those um, solar flare things. What I'm also gonna do is hollow out the uh, bubble so that this reflection isn't in it. So I'm gonna take another circular mask, drag it out. Quick tip, if you double click any mask property, it'll select the whole thing and then you can click and drag um, that various point. So something I did, I did this and then obviously set that mask to subtract um, and then feather it out a little bit. And then what I did is I added a new solid and I made it gray. I copied the subtract mask and then pasted it over to the gray. And then obviously you're going to have to switch that to add. And then I dropped the opacity down. 
just so it creates still like a general sense of the bubble but it doesn't have that reflection that obviously isn't from our scene so then a couple more things uh, you're gonna have to do to for this specific shot like I said if you're trying to do this on your own every shots gonna be a little different is drop the curves down a little bit that'll get it matching a little bit more and also uh, add some desaturation so type in saturation drag over the hue and saturation and just bring the master saturation down to zero and that gets it matching a little bit more and then what you can also do is add a tent effect tent over in the effects and presets drag that over uh, hit the white and then click over here and you want to click this like brownie color and you obviously don't want to mix it 100% you know maybe play around uh, like always like I say play around 40% so as you can see it's starting to blend a little bit more you might want to add a little bit of that color back not quite so much desaturation obviously right now you know that I dragged the bubble but if you just kind of take a step back and don't really think about it like you know that bubble blends pretty well right now with the scene and I'm not trying to get this perfectly to match because everyone's settings are gonna to need to be a little different to achieve the effect that they want to get so the next step is going to be uh, how are we gonna make this bubble look like it's actually floating because right now it just looks like it's stuck to one part of the lens um, so what we want to do is just make it a 3d layer and since it's a 3d tripod pan there's no uh, relative camera movement, so anywhere you put it in the scene, it's going to move the same amount. I don't know if that really made sense, but that's the best way I can kind of explain it. Hit W on your keyboard to maybe rotate it around. So now that the bubble is sticking to our scene, how are we going to make this bubble uh, animate out? The easiest thing I found for this situation is right here, when this big patch of bubbles comes, just kind of fade it in a little bit. Hit T on your keyboard, uh, hit the stop, stopwatch over here and drag it down to 0% for that frame and then fade it in maybe like a few frames and you'll be at uh, 100. Uh, something that was difficult uh, with this effect is creating a realistic float um, with the bubble. So that's just gonna be created with uh, some keyframe animations. So we're gonna start with the position of the layer and we're also gonna start with the scale. So hit S on your keyboard, hit that keyframe. If you hit U, it'll bring up all the keyframes for that layer. So to make keyframing easier, it's a lot easier. Obviously After Effects interpolates all the keyframes in between like a certain time scale. So it's a lot easier to deal with keyframes if you only have two of them because when you get three and four it's really difficult to separate it out and make it look like a smooth animation so I'm just gonna go over to the point where this camera tripod pan stops and I'm gonna drag the bubble from over here hit V to bring the position and I'm just gonna bring it I was gonna have to rotate it and mess with it a little bit and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this handle and just drag it up so it kind of floats over and then drag this other one so it's a smooth arc. So when you only have two keyframes like that, it's gonna look really smooth. So let's go ahead and preview that and see what we're working with. So we're also gonna to need to keyframe, uh, let's go into our transform, our orientation and XYZ rotation. So at the beginning, um, since it's such a wide angle shot, it really distorts it. So you're gonna to have to rotate it so the Z is pointing at the camera and it's flat. Then go to the last frame and do the same so that it kind of remains orientated. And then maybe just give it like a couple rotations. The scale is a little wonky, maybe bring it in. So then if you preview that, it's, and like I said, it's all about, you know, testing what looks best. So let's go here um, to, this is gonna be the Z rotation. So if we just add like two times rotation for that on that keyframe and then preview that, might be a little too quick. Oh, I didn't hit zero on the first keyframe. So make sure, you know, you hit keyframes for all these at the beginning, so if you affect anything at the end, it makes the relative change. So let's preview that and see what we're working with. So that looks a little too fast, maybe like one and a half rotations here. See if that looks any better. That looks a little more natural, it's still a little quick. So I'm gonna drag all the keyframes out so it's a little slower. And then what I'm also gonna do, and this is something that can help your animations or at least your 2D animations out a lot, is I'm gonna right click these, click keyframe assistant and then click easy ease. It's gonna make uh, the rotation and the position uh, ease into these final keyframes. So if you look at it now, it's not gonna come to such an abrupt halt and it's gonna kind of float in a little more. So what we're gonna do next is start scaling in the uh, bubble blowing footage. And this is where I was talking about is we're not gonna create a 3D false camera in this tutorial because it's gonna get a little too complex. Uh, I can if you request it. It's a very complex thing and you have to be a pretty advanced user. And I know a lot of people watching this tutorial probably are. So if enough people request it, I will make it. So we're gonna scale in this footage now. 
just up to probably like that point. We're also gonna wanna hit the position keyframe and move it a little as we go in. Maybe a little like that. And it's not gonna look super great right away, but when you add motion blur, it's not gonna be too bad. And that's why I didn't wanna include the 3D death movement as well in this tutorial, because it doesn't look uh, super awful without it. So then the next part, we obviously wanna scale up this bubble as it makes changes. So we're gonna hit the scale keyframe and then go into this last frame. And we're gonna wanna scale the bubble right to the edge of the frame. Position it, maybe change it a little bit, and then I'm gonna hit B on the keyboard so my composition only renders from that point. So right now we got the bubble flying in, let's see how this looks. All right, so that is a little too fast. Um, and this is this is what After Effects is all about. It's all about tweaking your effects to look as good as possible. So we're gonna need to zoom this background footage in quite a bit more, maybe like more like there and position it down that way. So if you hit control on your keyboard uh, and click a keyframe, it'll change it from an easy ease keyframe back to a regular one. So we're gonna do that for the scale, uh, just so it looks even. So now let's watch that back again and see the changes made. So that looks pretty good. Um, I'm gonna extend this composition just a little bit so we have a little more room to work with. So that looks pretty solid. Um, let's change the position of the bubble now because it's getting a little wacky. All right, so bubble floats over, zoom in happens. Another thing I'm gonna do is change the scale of this original keyframe right here to be a little bigger so it doesn't have to scale up quite as much. And I think that'll make it look quite a bit better. So once you get the animation of it looking pretty decent, um, so like I said, scale these keyframes right where the bubble is at the edge. Well, the top is cut off a little bit, but the edges of the bubble are still in it quite a bit. And the next part of this tutorial is showing you how to put the footage under your bubble. So the next shot we're gonna be using is just a shot I have of Hannah and Amir dancing on this beach. So before we put the footage under the bubble, what you're gonna wanna do is change the composition settings to be at least somewhere around um, 1080p so you have more resolution to uh, work with your footage. This shouldn't change the size of your bubble and the other composition as long as you don't scale it up. So the next step is obviously to drag uh, whatever footage you're gonna be using underneath the bubble so that it looks like it's actually part of the bubble. And we're gonna accomplish this. Uh, I have some footage included. It's just some footage of Hannah and Amir dancing on the beach. So if we put this under, obviously it's gonna look like it's under the bubble. So we're gonna wanna scale this down to be about approximately the size of the bubble. So what we're gonna wanna do is create some alpha with the soap bubble. So what you wanna do is also drag this unmult effect onto uh, your soap bubble here so it takes away that. And then what you wanna do is duplicate your soap bubble and then make sure that your footage is um, underneath it and you wanna click alpha mat. So what you're gonna wanna do is open up the mask properties for the bubble that you're setting uh, this as the alpha for and go ahead and hit M and then, sorry, auto save, and then just delete that subtract mask so that this will show through. Okay, so I am an idiot and I messed up a part of this tutorial. So go into the main composition and select your soap bubble and uncheck unmolt because obviously you don't wanna do that because then it'll affect the footage uh, that's in this other composition. So you just wanna play around with the opacity of the whatever shot you have in the bubble after you set the alpha layer. So now if you go in this composition, obviously uh, she's gonna be dancing around in that bubble as well. I'm also gonna stretch this layer out to 200% just so it'll last for the time that I need it to. So now that we have our footage underneath our soap layer, the question is, is how are we gonna make it look like we're actually entering the bubble? And so that's the next stop on this tutorial is scaling the outer layer of this bubble right here at the correct time so that in this composition over here it looks like the bubble is almost bursting and exploding while actually revealing the footage. So what we want to do is go in this composition right when it hits the edge and go over in our bubble composition and just scale up the outer layer. So hit S and then stopwatch for the keyframe, go forward a few layers and drag it up. And we also want to copy and paste this um, to this soap bubble layer so that the alpha for our footage is also scaled as well. So then when it reaches the edge, it enters the footage. Maybe you wanna do it like right here actually. So this is again where it just comes down to fine, to fine tuning and tweaking your effect to look best for your scene. So then the bubble will scale right there. And what we can do, what we're also gonna do in our bubble composition is uh, decrease the opacity 
of this bubble. So as it scales up, I'm going to hit a stopwatch for opacity and then just decrease it by the time it expands to be at zero. So then in this composition over here, the bubble expands and kind of dissipates. And then the next question you're probably wondering is how do I make the footage look not more realistic, but actually there. So what you want to do is duplicate uh, both the soap bubble alpha in your dancing shot and then uh, drag them on top. Set your opacity on this layer to be 100% so it isn't dim at all. And then you want to hit T on your keyboard, uh, drag opacity down to zero, and then go ahead by the time your bubble expands and drag it over to 100% so that when you go through the bubble, it increases in opacity. So as you can see right here, it starts entering the bubble and then it fades in with the footage. So we're gonna wanna go into the scale layer of this soap bubble and scale it up more so it reveals the entire layer of the footage. So then it just kinda continues and reveals the entire layer. And then you also wanna go to the dancing shot and hit scale. Uh, you wanna do this step so you don't lose any resolution. But you also wanna scale up the footage and then actually also you wanna scale this alpha layer e any more, even more so that it reveals. What you wanna do is once you zoom all the way into the bubble, as it's scaling over here, you also wanna hit your scale keyframe in this composition and then scale it down so that it fits the size of um, your footage. And obviously you also wanna rotate the bubble just so it is properly where you want it to be. Scale down a little more. One of the things that's tough with this is you're working with a 3D layer so it's hard to kind of get it to not look all wonky. It kind of gives it like a sense of like popping through the bubble when it kind of jumps in and scales out like that. All right, I don't mean to backtrack a little bit here, but this is just to help out with your bubble looking like it's blending more into the scene when it uh, enters. So along with the opacity cave, along with the opacity keyframes, you also want to keyframe uh, the scale at the beginning. Go forward to the same keyframe as your opacity, uh, and then drag the scale over, and then go over to the first keyframe and just flatten it out a little bit so it looks like it's kind of coming into the scene like that, and maybe drag it out so it's a little slower, maybe one frame slower. So that'll make it blend more like it, when it's coming into the scene. So then your bubble floats, it's floating, it's floating, it's floating, and then the zoom in happens, and then bam. So what I'm gonna do is go in and change the scale to happen a little earlier. So what I'm gonna do now for some um, final polish is just hit motion blur on all the compositions. Uh, make sure it's selected for your comp right here and then hit for the soap bubble and your original footage just so when it scales up, it also motion blurs. And if you preview that, um, you'll notice that it already is starting to look a lot better and blend a lot more. So there you have your bubble floating in. So now obviously as you preview through here, you'll have your final shot. This wasn't meant to be look 100% as polished as my final version. My final version took around like eight to nine hours to complete and tweak and get to where I want it to be. But this should show you the basics on how to create this effect and um, with what I've taught you, and if you have any other questions, just comment down below. I always appreciate the feedback uh, on improving my videos. As always, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, subscribe if you enjoyed it. Um, maybe share it with some of your After Effects friends if they're looking for something cool uh, and unique to do with transitions. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace out.